Hey folks, check out the new lab. Nothing like a pair of racks to add legitimacy to an operation, that's for sure. I've got my scope, I've got some parts, sonic, tux. What more could you ask for? Now, as a matter of fact, all this newfound inspiration has caused me to work a lot more on this boat. If you know me, you've known that I've been working on this for a long time. I started in high school. I am now graduated from college. Uh, but all the electronics have gone uh, revision after revision as I have learned more. Uh, the electronics today are nothing compared to the electronics that I had at the beginning of high school. But uh, the legacy lives on. I'll just give you a quick little overview of uh, what the systems are today. Um, of course, it's not done yet. Um, almost every system is in place, uh, at least hardware system is in place, minus the GPS and uh, part of the video system. And uh, there's a lot of software to write, but that's also working pretty well. All right, so the entire onboard system here is based on this uh, Arduino Pro Mini from SparkFun. Uh, this is a uh, 5 volt version running at 16 megahertz. It has an Atmel AVR, uh, sorry, 8 AT Mega 328P. Uh, microcontroller on it. Um, it's soldered directly onto this custom board that I made. And uh, this thing basically runs the show. It manages the radio link, um, which is not connected right now because, surprise, the floods in Thailand have uh, messed up Digi International's um, factory, which is uh, what I'm using. They make the uh, XBs. Um, it's unfortunate. Hopefully they can get everything up and running again. Uh, in any case, it manages that. It manages um, this guy here, uh, which is the uh, first-person view camera, it's mounted on a pan tilt. It doesn't like to be moved up and down without power to it, but anyways, it pans left and right, up and down. Um, as you'll see, there's lots of connections here. This is the most interesting one. This is a um, interface to push all the buttons remotely, um, because this is a, an old point-and-shoot, so I can control it all remotely and, you know, zoom and even take pictures. There's a buzzer. It's about to be replaced with a giant buzzer that lives in here uh, out of an alarm system. <laughs> That'll definitely wake up whoever's uh, taking a nap by the, by the water when I knock it. But now it's just this, you know, thing from Radio Shack. This is the voltage regulator for the uh, video transmitter, um, which will live in here. Uh, it takes 9 volts for whatever reason, so there you have it. Now this is just a simple charge pump that I made. Um, it provides a uh, voltage above the battery uh, so that I can drive various MOSFETs and things. Uh, the motor controllers are actually the only uh, thing on this boat that I did not build other than the camera and the video transmitter and receiver circuitry. Uh, I tried building some myself. Here are the results of my labor. Unfortunately, I uh, only pretend to be an electrical engineer. So if you had smell of vision you would be choking on the uh, burnt residue of this poor little controller. Um, they worked well for a while, but then I think what, I, what happened is I lost the uh, high side gate driver um, for yeah, the high side MOSFETs and they stopped conducting as much as they should, so they burnt up and exploded. Unfortunate, but I didn't actually spend any money on these uh, MOSFETs here. They all came out of a dead computer switching power supply, so that's good. Uh, at least I learned something. But they were so pretty. Look, they even have a heat sink custom attached on there. Oh well. They're junk now. These guys used to fit right between these two posts here. They used to slide right in. Um, but since I've replaced these with a uh, motor controller um, from Polulu uh, underneath here, you, you can see it. Here's some interface circuitry that I built to translate the signals that uh, my old system was providing for these guys and translate it to something this motor driver can understand. Uh, there's not much translation. This thing expects uh, the 2H bridge controls, so you know A and B, um, and you put one high and another low to go one direction put and you switch the direction sorry you switch the inputs to go the other direction you can go both high for brake or both low for brake these guys only took as you can see um, you know direction uh, and PWM
these guys take two directions and a PWM, so that's just converting there. This is the main power supply for uh, everything, basically. This thing takes uh, it's a switcher. There's two little switching modules here that I bought for like 15 bucks. They can handle four amps each and have a fairly wide input range. Um, so they take power directly from the battery with a couple filtering uh, circuitry as per the data sheet. And they yeah, convert it into this one does 5 volts, this one does 3.3. The 3.3 is really only used for that camera. Um, and the 5 volts is used by uh, the Arduino. Um, this thing and uh, the servos controlling this camera. So that's all run by this 5 volts uh, switching regulator. Now of course no radio control system is complete without, well, the remote control. So uh, this is my remote control. I don't particularly like the classic RC, you know, uh, controllers. Um, I, I wanted something a little bit more custom, it's a bit more intuitive to use. So this is a broken uh, Xbox, uh, you know, a, what is it, Mad Cats, you know, uh, controller here. Um, and yes, of course it was broken, so I kind of gutted it and I made it into a custom application here. So if you look down below, obviously that's the cover for it. It has these convenient little things that, uh, now they're stuck, these convenient little things that go down and grip your legs. So you can put it on your lap. You can kind of hold it like this, and it doesn't go anywhere. In any case, okay, here's yet another Arduino. I don't actually use the Arduino um, programming environment. I actually like the boards themselves. They're easy to use, and uh, they're very convenient for me. I still use the Arduino libraries occasionally, um, but anyways, that's that. You guys can go fight elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, anyways. So here I've got, you know, the usual suspects. I've got a couple shift registers uh, parallel to serial out uh, for all the buttons here. Uh, what else have I got? What the heck is this? Oh, this is, uh, oh, this is the other direction, shift register, uh, serial in and parallel out. That controls the, the, you know, the if you have an Xbox, you know, the, the Xbox button lights up with uh, four different segments. Uh, that that shift register controls those four segments and also the two vibrating motors. There's one in here and there's one in here of different sizes. Um, everything else, um, this thing, this potentiometer is turned directly by this so it couldn't be easier to read it. Uh, it just goes directly into one of the analog inputs. And that's about it for the transmitter. You'll notice the radio is not in here for the same reason that, uh, of course, this radio is in, in here. So taking the place of the radio is, if you follow this wire all the way up, you'll notice that it terminates in here. It's just a hard line that I built up. Um, the radios that I use are, uh, essentially can be used as a cable replacement. Whatever you put in one end, uh, as long as the serial, you know, uh, stream of zeros and ones, shows up at the other end. So, more or less, this will work. And this other cable is just power. I don't feel like hooking up the battery to this right now. Uh, so I just have it hooked up to the main power supply over there. Now that's nice and all, but does this thing actually run? Yes, it does actually, and it really scares me um, <laughs> inside here to have these things pushing a whole bunch of air everywhere. So I don't usually turn it up full power. I don't think I have actually, um, just because it makes so much noise and I don't know, I don't want one of these coming off and taking my head off. Uh, usually it would be powered by one of these giant uh, lithium polymer battery packs. Um, I find that these particular brand ones from, uh, what is it, Hobby King, are pretty much the best in terms of uh, ratio of quality to price. So this thing is giant, it can really put down a lot of power. So this thing only gets put in when it's on the water, which is never yet. Um, so I instead I use this power brick from a you know laptop. It provides, what is this, 15 volts at like 5 or 6 amps. It's enough to do testing. So I've got, you know, coming up here. And uh, this thing is going to do its little initialization routine. You can see the Xbox lights there doing a little spin. 
emulating the real Xbox. We can see that the power supply is power supplying. Okay, so let's turn on the TV. I'm actually not licensed to uh, use the transmitter uh, yet. I have to become a ham radio operator um, in order to use it. So right now I've just got the hard line. I'm going to turn on this power here. Grab the controller. Okay, so it's running. Uh, there's communication here. I don't have any feedback yet. There's going to be a display uh, here. That one down there is going to be attached here uh, in some fashion. So that's the horn. And, uh, okay, well, we can do some uh, tests right now of the camera. So this button here uh, enables the camera because usually it's not enabled because it sucks quite a bit of power. So I hit this button and you will see it center itself. That's not center. Well, in any case, so you can aim your camera like this. And uh, I haven't hooked up the controls yet to actually turn on the camera. But in any case, I'll just push this button here for now. It'll wake up. You can see that it has video. No card. Yes, I know there's no card. But anyways. Hello. Alright. Off to bed with you. Now, of course, what we're all here for is the uh, giant motors in the back. So this is my uh, mocked up throttle right here. It's just a mixer slider. Um, of course I'm going to change the mounting right now. It's just kind of hacked on there. So if I move this, you'll notice that nothing's happening. And the reason is that I've been kind of smart about this. You'll see in there there's a couple MOSFETs. Um, this thing does not actually provide power to the motors or indeed to the motor drivers down this wire at all uh, unless I explicitly allowed because these things can be quite dangerous um, and I don't want them going by themselves. Uh, also in the event of software failure I want all the motors to turn off. So what I have here uh, inside this there's a basically a heartbeat circuit. Uh, the microcontroller pulses a line up and down uh, a couple times a second and there's a, a resistor capacitor network in here and a couple of op amps that basically says if the um, pulse hasn't changed in X amount of time, cut the power to the gate of these MOSFETs so that no power flows to the motors. Um, so as you'll see right now, I'm moving this, the signal is being generated, PWM is being generated for the motors, but no power is on the motor controllers. So if I push this button here, uh, the motor controllers will be enabled. So I push that, you'll see the light comes on, and then if I move this, there they go. And they can't actually put too much power in them, otherwise that little power brick is going to give up. But anyways, you can see how, how it goes. Um, there's an additional feature. You can hit this button and hold it. You can see it going around and you can hear it vibrating. That means it's in reverse mode, this one here. So you can throttle up and it'll go in the other direction. And then you can hit it again and it snaps into forward. I've also put it in a safety where if you have the motors going and you hit this button it doesn't doesn't actually let you change direction to hopefully save the motor and the battery a little bit. So anyways, uh, if I push this button again it'll disable the aforementioned safeties and the uh, power will eventually time out to the motors. See? I can do this all I want and nothing's going Okay, and as for the steering, um, basically uh, this does a differential uh, drive or tank drive as you might call it. Um, each motor has its own uh, throttle setting of course so as I turn the wheel it basically sends more power to one motor and less power to the other motor. Um, it's actually more clever than that. If I turn the throttle all the way down and turn on the power here you'll notice that those spin in opposite directions so it's, it'll actually reverse one of the motors um, as necessary. So if I add a little bit of power into the mix, you'll notice now that one motor just slows down. If I continue turning the wheel, eh, well now I'm running out of power, so let me turn down the power a little bit. If I turn the, motor, uh, the wheel a bit more, you'll see that the other motor spins up as well yeah. in you know, different directions. So pretty simple. So well, I hope my uh, incoherent ramblings were at least a little interesting. Um, 
future plans for this boat uh, include, well, finishing it up, of course, um, in its current state, but uh, eventually there's a connector in here labeled GPS. Yes, this thing is going to become autonomous, and I hope to make it cross the Puget Sound by itself. Um, I don't know if that's actually going to work, but, you know, we'll see. Um, might have to rent out a boat to, you know, chase it. Um, other things, of course, the radio needs to be finished. And, uh, well, let's hope I don't crash. That would suck.